r slash ask reddit nsfw what things should be kept private from your so no matter how healthy your relationship is journals my partner writes in one every night before bed and i have no idea what any of it says if she wants to share with me she can those are her private thoughts and feelings until she decides differently same goes for me the unkind shit you think when you're angry and tired it will absolutely never help at all to say any of it out loud and even if you don't have a particularly big fight or break up over it you'll still regret it and they'll still remember possibly also what you think about how hot other people are depending on how jealous slash insecure your so is my ex-wife used to interrogate me after every therapy session I had edit you people are amazing I never expected to get this much support thank you all my midnight snack stash I don't have any but I think I should have some your reddit username and password even though my wife and I have been happily married for six years we decided we would never go for a shit while the other is in the shower we're just not going there your methamphetamine production business my steady supply of jokes I set up my Android to send me a joke every night at 5 p.m. and I tell it to my husband later on before I jump in the shower he always asks where I'm getting this stuff from and I just laugh and shut the bathroom door I would like him to continue thinking of me as this endless joke fairy for the rest of our lives smiley face which of your friends or family don't like them it will do nothing but upset them and worse create a bigger problem between them I would also like to add to that if one of your friends or family members don't like your s slash o and you aren't at the very least making them be polite and respectful when they have to be around each other you are the main problem in that scenario how many lego death stars I have bought that I know you keep a secret stash of chocolate in the Tampax box not my business that you know you're the pet's favorite person where I hide the secret spare pair of scissors I keep for when he's lost all the other 11 pairs of scissors we own and I need to trim a chip bag down to make getting to the chips easier how many times you look at your vagina with a mirror sometimes no matter how attractive your partner is to you and no matter how much you love them there is an aspect to them that is unchangeable but that you find gross or annoying or just generally less than attractive clogged nose pores a laugh that sounds like a muppet big toenails that just look a little bit weird or that single long hair growing from inside their ear that just keeps coming back no matter what they do if it's going to make them feel insecure or unloved this is something you should just keep to yourself in a relationship you learn each other's weak points and vulnerabilities and using them against your partner is a boundary that once you cross it you can't come back from once you make someone feel like they can't trust you with their vulnerable self your relationship is on its way out things that you don't like about their body they just don't need to know if you are concerned about their health or hygiene that warrants a conversation but making comments about physical flaws completely unnecessary my wife is sensitive about animals so anytime I see slash read some sort of tragedy related to an animal I hide it from her my dad has mentioned a few times that in their 40 plus years of marriage he's never gone in her top dresser drawer or purse your psychologist slash therapy sessions I had an ex that used to demand I tell him what I talked about in my sessions and it was super uncomfortable with my current partner we are both in therapy and if it's a phone session the other goes in a different room if we want to talk about something we told the psych or something we will tell our psych at the next appointment we do but I would never ask and nor would he we might ask how did it go to which the other may say it was good or it was emotionally draining but that's as far as it should go these are personal sessions not couples therapy we're not in that other people's secrets they're not yours to share edit what I mean by this 
is agreeing to keep something confidential and then going against it. If your relationship started under potentially offensive pretenses, e.g. they were madly in love w but you they were just the your rebound. Where your secret stash of band-aids is. I don't know about the rest of you, but my wife and kids will go through an industrial size case of band-aids faster than you can say supercalifragilisticexpialidocious and the twice a year I actually need one they're never there. Things you aren't ready to talk about yet. I have a lot of trauma and I'm not always ready to talk or explain. However, I'm lucky my partner respects that and has let me open up at my own pace. No matter how healthy a relationship is, there'll always come a time where you have resentful thoughts of your spouse. Those should be kept to yourself, as most of them pass quickly. The only time you should share them is if they're persisting in some behavior that is hurting you, and then it should be done calmly and not in the heat of the moment. For instance, if you got home from work tired to find your spouse binge watching a TV show, but the sink is full of dirty dishes, the impulse may be to lace into them. Don't. Go ahead and do the dishes, and tomorrow, when that initial flash of anger has passed, discuss the issue. People say arguments can be healthy in a relationship, but it all comes down to how you argue. Spouses, at least if they're good ones, know intimate details about you, your past, and how you think and feel. This gives them weapons to hurt you, and it may be tempting to use such weapons when angry. But if you know your spouse has a sore spot about their dad, and you say in anger this is why your dad never loved you, you have permanently damaged your relationship. And that damage builds up over time. Successful relationships survive because people rein themselves in in that moment. Even when they're angry, they don't want to inflict wounds like that. So whenever the impulse arises to use those weapons in anger, resist the temptation. You may forget what you did quickly, but they won't. I do 12-step stuff, and I won't tell her what I hear in the rooms. The location of your ships while playing Battleship. It's not that it should be kept private, as in forcefully, but I believe both persons in a relationship should have privacy in their devices. My so has all my logins, and passcodes for my phone and tablet, but this doesn't give her the right to go snooping for stuff that will never be there. She can totally grab my phone, if it's nearest, to search on Google, or grab someone's phone number. But we've agreed that if either of us snoop, you better be sure that there's going to be something to find, because if there isn't, then you deserve the trouble that you've caused. That answer is completely dependent on you, your partner, and your relationship. If she poops on the table while birthing your child. No she fucking didn't. I don't like the idea of sharing absolutely everything with one's partner like it's a proof of healthiness. I think it's healthy to maintain some sort of individuality, personal mental space, your secret garden that only you can access. You are not only a couple, you don't only exist through your partner, you also are an individual human being with your own inner world that you don't have to share entirely with someone else, and no one can take that away from you. I feel like if you completely merge with someone else you lose yourself. I don't think that's avoidant attachment style, I'm clearly not. I just think it's normal if my so has things she doesn't want to talk about with me, won't share every single thing. She's not me, and as much as I like to say she's mine, she's not really mine either. Confidential work-related things that I'm legally not supposed to tell anyone outside of the project slash case. Anything wanted private that has no direct impact on the relationship. People don't need to be sharing text messages, diary entries, detailed itineraries when apart etc. Any insistence on that kind of sharing is paranoid and unhealthy. Trust is important as is understanding people may still need their space regardless of relationship status. Edit, obviously there are gray areas. Itineraries are useful because of safety concerns, but that's a trust issue too. You are sharing it with someone you trust voluntarily, 
rather than feeling coerced into providing a constant stream of data. If you wish to share things cool, because that's a choice freely made. The huge penis of your ex-boyfriend and how much more satisfying it is to have someone with a normal one. Trust me. I know it's not logical but no dude wants to hear that. Don't question it just trust me. Your second family. The number of packets of crisps I eat in a evening, if I don't know the answer she shouldn't either. This is a really subjective answer and I'm sure Reddit will disagree, but for me. Bathroom time. I got three kids and one of them is my full-time responsibility as her mom isn't around. I live and breath for my kids and I love them, but doing my morning and evening bathroom events I really love the solitude. The last few women I dated were great, but they would just kinda barge in no matter what I was doing. To me, showering at the end of the day, brushing my teeth, using the toilet are all kind of zen for me. I just don't like sharing a shower or being interrupted while doing so. That's just me. I'm single so. Maybe there's a reason for that, wink with tongue sticking out, edit, for those saying just lock the door I want to say my daughter is almost 5. When I shower I can't just leave her alone. That's how horrible accidents happen. Yeah, she can pour herself water and use the potty alone but I can't shut her out. If she has a problem I need her to be able to come in. I live alone and her brothers are only around ever so often due to custody orders. Locking my bathroom door just isn't a good idea with a toddler running around. She sits on my bed and usually watches TV while I shower. I don't know if the women I've dated just saw this as an open opportunity, but locking the door to my kiddo just isn't a good idea. Whether or not I like my butthole licked. It's not something you should share with my mom when you're losing a game of Uno, Molly. The sexual habits of past relationships. When you poop. We share everything but that bathroom door stays closed when I'm doing my business. It's the only bit of mystery we have left. Your internet browser history eyes eyes eyes. You take that shit to the grave. Nobody is perfect. But if I'm asked. Yes you are the most handsome slash biggest dick slash best in bed slash best partner ever. I don't understand how people say anything different for their current partner but you know, different folks. Edit, I'm seeing responses speak about being dishonest and lack of communication which is a great point but not what I meant. If your partner is doing something wrong in bed or just your relationship in general you obviously should communicate with them about it. My comment was more about being my partner's biggest cheerleader and building them up, purely that angle. What I did in Serbia in the 90s. If your so has been in combat, don't ask about the details. In the unlikely event they want you to know, they'll tell you. This is not to say they should not seek slash you should not encourage them to get the appropriate medical support nor is this to say that you shouldn't know they've been in combat or listen to them if they experience emotions around it, however, seeking out the details are a red line of inquiry. EDA, fellow redditors have made good points in response to this, and it's important to note that I deliberately call out details as the red line. Acknowledging to your partner that you're willing listen to what they want to share and slash or to be part of their support system, in whatever way is in integrity for your relationship, is always the priority. Bowel movements. Yes, there are couples who don't hesitate to shit in front of each other, but... Yeah. No. My girlfriend told me how much bigger her ex is compared to me. Ladies for the love of God don't do that. A couple of years ago we found a pigeon in our garden that had broken its wing. My wife loves all animals so instantly named it Eric. We took it to a local vet's and they said they would take care of it. I emailed them a couple of seeks later as my wife wanted to check in on it. I got an email back saying it had to be put down because its wing had broken. This would have upset my wife so I doctored the email reply and made out like it had been released. 
for two years after that my wife was convinced that a pigeon that came to our garden was Eric. We have moved since and she thinks another one is Eric. I will never let her know the reality of poor Eric the Og. If you're a guy, which I am, apparently you should keep harassing texts to yourself. I have a subordinate at work, girl, who is non-stop trying to sext with me. I told my wife about it because, while I don't engage with this chick, I'm genuinely worried that if I piss her off she'll make up some lie about me and go to my boss. It's a really helpless position to be in and since my wife likes to go through my phone, I told her about it ahead of time. Turns out, in her mind, I must have done something to give the impression. Basically the male version of shouldn't dress like that. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you have enjoyed this video and subscribe to never miss an upload.